for our failure to conquer spiraling energy demand. Faisal Islam there. And in the studio now is Tony Juniper, the director of Friends of the Earth, and Keith Dancy, a scientist who works on the effects of climate change. And let me ask you first, Mr. Dancy, you describe yourself as an environmentalist, but also a nuclear convert. How did that happen? Well, I've been a member of Friends of the Earth for a long time myself. And so I had originally been opposed to nuclear power because of its inherent dangers. But I became aware that the dangers posed by global warming far exceed the dangers posed by nuclear power. And if you like, um, I see it as the lesser of two evils. I think that mm -hmm. we will have to move away from fossil fuels as quickly as possible. And the only way that we can meet the energy gap that coal, oil and gas leave behind is to use nuclear power. I'm not happy about that, but I think it's absolute necessity because we're talking about effects of global warming mm. which can reach thresholds yep. which start runaway reactions. That, that um, then can't be stopped. A mm. Absolutely. That was the message mm. from the Prime Minister today. He was saying mm. I mean, everybody would like to rely on renewables yeah. to fill the energy gap, but he was saying it simply can't be done at the moment. Well, the point about the global climate change is absolutely right. We do have to do something. We have to do it very fast to avoid catastrophic impacts on the environment and the global economy. The trouble is, though, as far as we can see, is that nuclear power won't work. Even if we doubled nuclear power capacity in this country tomorrow, which we can't do, it will take 20 years, even if we could, we'd only reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 8%. Now, considering it will take two decades, take many billions of pounds, will divert political attention towards one technology, we think we can do much more than that with that money and with that time. Can renewables do it, quickly. though? Can renewables fill in 30% well, of the energy we're currently using, which is not what's just, required? It's not just renewables. One of the spurious points put across there is somehow that nuclear power is going to deal with uh, oil supplies. Oil we use for aeroplanes and for cars. Nuclear power can do nothing to that. So we'd have to be looking at what nuclear power can deliver, and it can't deliver across big parts of the economy. Now, renewables is one part of the equation, so is energy efficiency, and we can cut our emissions in half from the power sector without noticing any difference by doing simple things like changing the country's light bulbs. We can do that very quickly. It won't take 20 years. And, of okay. course, we need to be looking at the cleaner use of fossil fuels as well. It's not only about renewables. Keith, as you know a thing or two about this. Have you become convinced that renewables and energy saving can't do it? I think that it is almost inevitable that we will reach a situation in which renewables simply cannot meet either the global needs or the national needs. We have a situation where our coldest periods in winter dominated by high pressure, which is going to knock out wind power. And if you knock out wind power, you knock out, to a certain extent, most of your wave power. That means that we're left with other sources of renewable energy, such as hydroelectric, geothermal, solar. Um, if we have a cloudy high pressure, then we can't even have solar power. Now, these high pressure systems, which persist for weeks in winter, in the coldest months, in periods when we need the most power, we have essential renewable resources knocked out. What will fill the gap? We have to maximise our okay. use of renewables, but we have to see nuclear power as part of our armoury okay. to reduce global warming. Okay. Tony Juniper, security of supply is another argument that the government are going to use, that we don't want to be dependent on buying gas yeah. from Russia, um, yeah. oil from the Middle East. It becomes more of an argument in the current geopolitical situation, doesn't it, that we should be generating power yeah. here? Well, again, if that was true, then maybe there'd be a big argument for going down this route. But the reality is, is that most of our gas imports in the near future will be coming from Norway and from the Netherlands, so not countries that we would consider hostile to our interests. And let's not forget that nuclear power doesn't come from nowhere. It comes principally from highly enriched uranium. And uranium we have to mine out of the Earth's crust. Now, the supplies of uranium that are there the high-quality ores will be depleted very quickly if this country and other okay. countries go down the nuclear power route. And at the same okay. time, the uranium has to be refined, and it's refined with fossil fuels. Nuclear power is not a carbon-free technology, and the uranium we need to burn in the nuclear reactors is finite too. It's not sustainable, right. it's not clever, and there's better things we can do. Okay, Tony Juniper, Keith Dancy, thank you very much both for coming in. Kidnappers have released a video of four men who were taken hostage in Iraq at the weekend.